Well, interestingly, I would say that Trump won this time for three reasons. He won because people trusted him more on the economy and to fix the cost of living crisis. They trusted him more to fix the crisis on the southern border in America, where they got a genuine illegal immigration crisis. Nearly 10 million people have come in illegally in the last four years. Piers Morgan just delivered a masterclass in shutting down a woke host, and it all went down on The Late Late Show. This is one you don't want to miss. Let's dive in, and I'll share my thoughts well, after. Actually, he talked about this when he won. He represents to a lot of Americans a core of common sense, he called it. And I think I'm the same. You know, people say to me, oh, you're so controversial. I'm like, well, which of my opinions is actually that controversial? So you, you think you're, you're the voice of common sense? I don't think my opinions are that controversial. I think that actually they're the opinions of the majority. When I was coming here today, the number of people who came up to me at the airport were like, Piers, we're right behind you. Keep talking the common sense. <laughs> is, is that, am I near enough? I am actually Irish, by the way, just so you know. Uh, I've got Galway roots. My father was from Galway. Um, right. So I do feel like I'm one of you, even if you'd rather I wasn't. So, um, <laughs> so those are the people that actually came up to you and well, there, you, you didn't see, people, you didn't see also, the people running the other way. Well, no, I saw a few people running the other way, but they, the, um, the ones that came up, though, it was all about common sense. Keep giving your opinion, because we got to a weird stage a year or so ago where people were terrified of expressing opinions. And I found that incredibly sad that in a free democratic society, take a place like Ireland, right, you will not meet a gobby of people in the world, in a nice way. You are highly opinionated, you're bright, you're funny, you like a good crack, you like a laugh, right? But the idea that you all have to be stifled, censored, that's why I called my show Uncensored. No, and you should all be able to disagree with each other. You and I should be able to go to the pub, have a few pints of the black stuff, argue about everything, and then stay friends. Funny enough, Emily and I are like that. We have terrible dinner parties where we end up shouting at each other, and then we're next, we can't wait to do it again. Um, that's how society should be. That's how society should be. It's not how society is. No. You have kids. Deep down, do you not worry about the world that Donald Trump is going to leave your kids no, and my actually, kids? No, I don't. I actually, I'm, I would have been more worried if Kamala Harris had won. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree or disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out because it would have sent a message that this whole woke, as Elon Musk calls it, the woke mind virus. Now, woke has got a bad rap, rightly. What it used to be was raising awareness for social and racial injustice. By that criteria, I'm woke. But that's not what it is anymore. What it's become is a kind of new form of fascism, where people who identify as woke, they want to dictate how everybody else, how they dress, how they speak, what they find funny, the jokes that they can uh, laugh at, the heroes that they can revere, the books they can read, the movies they can enjoy, that is fascism. It's the very thing that they profess to hate most. And here's one example I'll give you, and this might not be popular in the room, but I don't care, and it's this. In, a, in America, the most popular ad that Trump did was about the whole issue of trans athletes in women's sport, which I've been very vocal about for years. I think it's completely unfair, unequal, and it shouldn't be happening. I also want equal rights and fairness for all trans people at the same time. There's nothing to do with being transphobic, it's about protecting women's rights. Trump did an ad and all it said was, Kamala is for they, them. Trump is for you. They reckon it was the most effective 30 second political ad in modern times because you it resonated with the public. You say that, but the exit polls after that American election didn't talk about pronouns. Mm. They, they said people were voting on the economy. And yeah, but that ad, they reckon the New York Times, which is a liberal newspaper, they said that ad may have swung it by two to three points. Unbelievably effective. A lot of people would also say that the trans community out there are people who are fearful and need supported. And the idea of being woke isn't about being a fascist. It's about going through life with, instead of having your eyes closed, having your eyes open and maybe just trying to be kind. Do you even believe that? I do. Really? I think there's a lot of people Come do. On. That's not what woke means. Woke is people running around sc screaming hysterically about absolutely everything, and they want to dictate how people lead their lives. And we are a free democratic society. You should be able to lead your life how you want to lead it. Have the opinions you want to have. Have the, the right to live your life how you want to lead it. I admire the fact that he launched his own show after being let go from CNN. Whether you agree with him or not, 
you have to respect someone who stands their ground and stays true to their principles. He's all about common sense, and I appreciated how he highlighted something so important in this interview. He talked about how there was a time when people could disagree politically, even argue passionately, but still shake hands, share a meal, and move on afterward. Fast forward to today, and we've got figures like Joy Reid telling people not to spend the holidays with family members just because they voted for Trump. That level of division is exhausting. This is why I enjoy Piers Morgan's show, Uncensored. He's bringing people from both sides together and fostering the conversations we actually need to have. He's not censoring voices, even if he doesn't agree with them. And that's refreshing in today's media landscape. Whether you agree with Piers or not, you've got to appreciate that he's facilitating real, unfiltered dialogue. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.